And hello everybody, welcome back. It is Jeff again and coming to you with something a little bit different today. I am going to go through my build of a immersion circulator or sous vide machine that I discussed in one of my previous episodes that I finally got around to building. I'll be honest, this is post commentary. The sound didn't come through properly, but we're going to see if we can make this work for everybody to see. I basically found some instructions on instructables.com by somebody called Berka LaSalle or Lachelle that I used where they have a sous vide cooker for less than $40 what they discuss. So you need a few parts. You need this right here, which is just a standard old wall socket plug. Uh, this is a panel mount version. This one just has some prongs in the back. It doesn't have anything special that you can screw uh, into like a socket would. Some people use the socket types. This one is worked just fine for mine. I actually used a solder. You can use quick connects, whatever on it. The next plug that you need is something called the C14 plug. This is the same plug that is used in a computer uh, for a for power. So I have plenty of those power cables lying around. So I wanted to use these to get power because it's something I'm easily accessible or I have easily accessible to give power to my machine. So the standard plug right here, as you can see, plugs directly into that, and that's what's gonna give my machine power in the first place. The other thing is the enclosure box right there. That black thing is the enclosure box. It is a plastic box, mine's 4.7 by 4.7 inches. And inside is a temperature regulator, as well as my wires, because this is a hooked up version. This is already completely built and finished. As you can see from the front, this is what the temperature controller is gonna look like. I particularly bought one that had Fahrenheit controls. Many of you can buy have Celsius controls. This one has Fahrenheit or a Fahrenheit display reading so that I can see things in Fahrenheit. Uh, that's so it costs a little bit more money than most of them you can get, because you can get them pretty cheap out there on eBay for like eight, nine, ten dollars, something like that. Mine, I believe, cost fourteen. I'm gonna put all this stuff in the description so you guys can see what I bought. But the nice thing about these is they're made to go into a panel of some type. All of these, the the two plugs that I bought and the temperature controller are all meant to go in a an enclosure type box or a panel mounted or whatnot. As you can see, the temperature regulator on the side has some orange clips on it. Those orange clips are great because it makes it so you can easily cut a hole in the box, which I used to Dremel for. Oh, this is, I'm showing you the cord right now. I just used a cord from an old lamp that I had as my cords in here because I know they're rated for 110 AC voltage, which brings up the point that I'm about to talk about momentarily. You need to get one of these that is 110 volts as opposed to a DC voltage, 110 AC volts as opposed to a DC voltage one because it's gonna be what's used to turn on and off the crock pot from the same power supply as well. So you don't wanna have something with a different type of voltage than you need for your crock pot that you're gonna be hooking it up to. So the temperature regulator itself fits into the enclosure box. Those orange clips that you can see, they actually are what hold it into place. So it's nice, you just cut a hole. Yeah, I'm pointing to those orange clips right now. You cut a hole in the box and you slide the temperature controller in there and the orange clips clip back to the side and cinch up tight to keep it in place. So it's very easy to mount in any type of enclosure. Um, I was saying I used a Dremel for this and the Dremel might not have been the greatest tool or maybe I had it on too high of a speed because it started melting the plastic enclosure box. So it wasn't a perfect cuts on these. It's not perfect at all on these, but the concept is the same. Then after I had that mounted, I put that 110 socket plug in there. I mounted that in the back. I'm gonna show you momentarily, or see this is, I'm showing you right now how I mounted the, the temperature controller into the box in the front. Those three components are the only real components that you need to buy for this whole setup, pending you already have a crock pot. So on the back, as you can see, there's my C14 connector there on the left. I got a little bit of a bad cut on that, which is part of the Dremel's issue. It was too hot, it started melting the plastic. It made a hole a little bit bigger than I wanted it to, but it's fine, it's not a big deal. It was just a test project anyway. Um, so I mounted that in the back to get power in. I also mounted the AC 110 volt standard plug in the back. So the C14 connector right there that I'm pointing to, that is actually taking power in from the wall. It goes into 
the two spots on the temperature controller to give it power. So the two wires from it go straight down to the temperature controller, give the temperature controller power. That one on the right I'm pointing to now is actually the relay. So that relay opens and closes based on what the temperature is. And what happens is that's supposed to send the signal out to whatever you're using to heat your food, which in my case is a crock pot. So you need to get your wiring so that not only do you wire constant power to your temperature controller, but one of those lines of the two wires that are gonna be coming out of that C14 connector, one of them needs to also go into the relay so that it can come out when it's closed and finish the connection on the standard wall socket, which is where the crock pot is going to plug into. So that's what I'm pointing to right now. And on the left right there that I'm pointing to, that is where the thermocouple itself actually is mounted into the, the temperature controller. As you can see, that's the thermocouple. That's the one that comes with it. Very small one, very standard one. It's not a food grade one by any stretch of the imagination, but it works in an immersion circulator system like this. So as we look at this components, that's all there is to this whole setup. It is pretty simple to make. Power goes in there, it comes down, one of the switches goes in, to the relay to turn on and off that left power socket to the crock pot. You have to have power going into that, in this particular temperature controller into that middle one to give it power. And I drilled a hole there for the thermocouple to come out of so I could put that in my crock pot so you could get the temperature of the crock pot. In the enclosure box, you close it. This is the whole quote unquote sous vide machine on its own. The one thing it's missing is it doesn't have circulation feature. This is literally just a temperature controller. There's no circulation involved with this. Uh, I've heard of people utilizing uh, an air pump from a fish tank. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna show you how this thing works. We're sitting right now, I turned it on, I plugged it in. I plugged it into the wall and in the other socket where I would normally have a crock pot hooked, I'll show you in a moment. That's the wall plug coming in with the power. Right next to it, that's just a lamp. Right, see, I'm pointing to the lamp that it's going to. That's just a lamp, just to show you how it's supposed to work. Right now it's saying that the ambient temperature of the room is 73 degrees, the thermocouple. If I breathe on the thermocouple, which I'm about to do right now, you're gonna watch the temperature go up. See, that's I'm breathing hot air onto the thermocouple. It's registering the temperature properly, and you can see that the temperature on the temperature controller is showing that it's it's getting higher. So what you need to do is you need to set this machine and you need to set it with a threshold of where you want that temperature to be. <clears throat> right now I'm showing that if I set it to like 77, 78 degrees right there, that when I hit set, we're only at 76 degrees in the room. That lamp did not turn on, however, the reason it didn't turn on is because this thing still has to have some leeway that it has. It needs to have a couple degrees that it's playing with here. Um, it's not gonna turn on right when it hits that the, the lower threshold of your temperature. It's about two degrees Fahrenheit below so that it keeps it in a range. Otherwise, it'd be constantly switching itself. So I'll now reset this thing because we're at 78 degrees. I'm gonna reset this thing momentarily and show you guys how the lamp is going to turn on and off like your crock pot would be turning on and off when you actually need to use this machine or when the machine is running to keep the, the water. So I'm gonna set it up to 80 degrees. Notice we're only at 77.9 degrees. So we're within that, we're lower than that two degree threshold. The lamp turned on. You can see that there's a little light by the heat button showing that the output is on in case it's not working properly, but it shows right there. My output is on you can tell that the output is on because the lamp has turned itself on. And now I'm gonna breathe on this thermocouple again and get it above that threshold temperature. And boom, we hit 80 degrees, that light turned off. And it's because it's it's going to, it's going to lower back down. We're past 80 degrees, the threshold, but right when we hit 78, two degrees below, that light turns back on. That's what would normally be kicking your crock pot back on in order to keep your food heated up at the right temperature and keep it there. So you can do a long cooking process on things. Now I'm gonna show you how it's actually supposed to work with a crock pot. You can see I've got my box, it's all closed up now. I'm going to take it. I'm discussing the concepts of an immersion circulator at the time, but I'm showing you again, here's the thermocouple coming out the back. 
the thermocouple needs to be in the crock pot so it's measuring the temperature of the water. I'm going to place it there momentarily and we're actually going to get a reading on the temperature of the water. But first, I want to show you guys how this thing all plugs in so you don't you don't get confused at how it is. The nice thing about using a C14 connector for the power is that I have two different spots on the back, two different connectors on the back, so you can't really mix up the cords per se. So this particular crock pot, you also have to have one similar to this. This crock pot itself, the way that it works is that it turns, it's got a turn knob on the front, off on the left, keep warm, low, and then high. You need a crock pot that's going to keep itself on when it's unplugged and you plug it back in, it needs to resume the state it was at before. A lot of the new digital crock pots, if you unplug them and plug them back in, they will no longer be on and they will not work for a system like this. The nice thing about these turn button ones is you're always in the either you know high, keep warm, low, whatever state that you leave it in. It's gonna re-engage that state when it gets power again. So it works perfectly for one of these setups. So I'm gonna take right now, I'm gonna plug this the power plug in to the wall, my standard old computer supply power cord, plug it into my machine, gonna take it, now plug it into the wall to give the system power, as you can see. No trickery here, it's really in the wall. The temperature controller just turned on, taking my plug from the crock pot itself, it doesn't go to the wall, it goes into the back of the sous vide machine goes into that other plug in the back of the sous vide machine because it's going to turn on and off based on the temperature, which is exactly how we want this thing to work. My thermocouple is needs to be placed within the water in the crock pot, which I'm going to do momentarily because as you can see, it's hanging off to the side. Oh, I didn't actually didn't put it in there. You need to put it in the crock pot, so don't forget to do that. Otherwise, you'll be measuring the temperature of the air. Right now it's set to 127 degrees because that's what I cooked some salmon at the other day. You can see that since we're not at 127 degrees, the little light next to the heat is on right now. Right now the crock pot is actually on. You can't really tell because there's no lights on the crock pot itself, but the crock pot is actually on, on because we're not at that temperature. So it wants to heat up that water and keep it to the right temperature. So I'm showing you right now, I'm gonna turn this thing down we're going to turn it down past the degrees that we're currently at. We're sitting at 63 degrees in a 66 degree environment. Notice that light is off. So now if that's what we had to set to, the crock pot would not be on right now because we're already too low. I'm going to go a couple degrees above and notice the light is back on. The crock pot would be running currently because we're not at the temperature we wanted to be at. That is the basic concepts of a, an immersion circulator. Like I said, mine does not have the circulator part to it because circulator implies keeping that water moving. In a small system like this, you don't need to keep the water moving to keep the temperature pretty good. If you go up and do like larger scale, you might wanna do that. As I said, people have used fish tanks, uh, fish tank bubblers and things like that before. Uh, which you could put another plug in there that's always on and keep something like that running at all times to keep the water circulating. But I personally didn't feel the need for one and it seems to be working great without. I had a couple of good meals out of this thing. But this is an immersion circulator for well under $40, which is what I base this thing off of. I will put my parts list and my prices in the description of this video as well as the Instructables link. So if you guys want to make something like this, it's a great little project. It's quite easy and it serves a great purpose. So good luck and enjoy.